Well, I'm super excited to be here today. Um, this, you know, this time is going to be really special for me, um, and I think that it may be a little difficult for some things that I say today for some of you, but I think that there may be one, two, maybe ten, who knows how many people that may be changed because of the Lord and what he may do in your heart today. So, can you guys see me okay over there? Okay, well, today um, I'm going to talk on um, what I believe is called a call for freedom for you guys, okay? Um, and I'm going to start with Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So today I'm going to share a little bit about what God's done in my life, um, and um, you know I think that there are, like I said, there are, there's some people here that may be changed, um, and that's if you open your hearts. So if you guys can do me one favor, we got 20 minutes. If you could just open your hearts and just pray to yourself right now to the Lord, say God, open my heart to receive today. Um, so I believe that there are some here today that need to break free from bondage to fear or depression, addiction, suicidal tendencies or thoughts, um, sexual addictions, a fear of man or peer pressure. Some of you are here today and you're really lonely. You may have, you know, a thousand friends on Instagram or Maybe you're the most popular person here, or you're the most athletic, or people think you're beautiful, um, or good looking, and um, you have straight A's. Yet some of you guys may have no friends. Some of you may feel totally alone. Um, maybe your best friend abandoned you, or you're searching for love and affection and attention in the wrong places. And maybe alcohol or drugs or lust or pornography or sex, those things may be something that you're going to, to numb the pain. Statistics show that your generation is the most social, actually, but also the most lonely. And um, suicides are happening at increasing measures every day. You know that every 40 seconds, somebody will take their life, and 800,000 people a year will try to commit suicide in people will be successful in that. And I know this is like really awkward that I'm talking about this and probably some of you are like really uncomfortable. But some of you are uncomfortable because I think this is relating to you. So open your hearts, stick with me. I have some hope and encouraging words for you, okay? So I'm telling you this because you're not alone, because I've been there, because I care about you. I don't know you, but they're praying for you guys, okay? And the Lord cares about you. And I'm concerned about where you spend eternity, right? So that's why I'm here, because I love you, okay? So um, today, I'm going to share about what brought, God brought in my life, how he's brought healing to me, to my life, walking me through many trials and uh, many years of pain and suffering. Preparing me, though, for a ministry where I am sharing the love of Christ and bringing hope to hurting people. So I grew up in a very loving and caring Christian home, actually. Um, since I was about eight years old, I struggled with debilitating fear and depression, suicidal thoughts and uh, tendencies, and anorexia. I was medicated for years, and I was brought to doctors who told me that I'd be medicated forever, for the rest of my life. Um, I battled with horrific thoughts of suicide and inadequacy and a fear of going crazy. This went on for many, many years, and I felt completely alone, as if I was imprisoned in my own body. Nobody was facing what I was facing. I was sure of it. It progressively got worse, and I became pregnant with my daughter, who's 16 now, and um, I was medicated for severe weight loss and insomnia. I just remember thinking, I need to be healed. I've got to get better from this. I've got to be strong. I have a baby now. Live like this, right? 
Um, but I wanted to die, and I knew I couldn't because I was now responsible for another life. And I remember my parents uh, one time laying hands on me and praying over me. And um, I threw their hands off of them, and I yelled, stop. And I had so much anger. And I was so deep in despair that even prayer was painful. And I wanted nothing to do with it. I truly believe God had abandoned me. I couldn't feel or sense his presence or, or presence or love in my life. I didn't want to tell anyone about my crazy thoughts in my head because I thought people would think I was crazy. And maybe they'd go tell my friends or tell someone else. So I remember, out of desperation, one afternoon, dropping to my knees and crying out to God, pleading with him to heal me. In Psalm 18.5, it says, Out of my distress, I called upon the Lord. He heard my cry. And he set me free. So I began to literally cry out to God for deliverance. And sometimes I would just use the name of Jesus. Well, the first time I did this, peace fled from my body. And God showed me his power right before my eyes. So I continually cried out to him. And each time I did, he was faithful. He provided peace. And this strengthened my faith immensely. And I knew that at that point I needed to rely on God fully in order to survive another day. This was the turning point for me, for my healing. So after many years of medication and psychiatric counseling, I began seeing a biblical counselor from my church, and we began talking through lies that I'd been telling myself for many years, lies that my identity was, quote unquote, fear. I used to say, my, anxi my anxiety will get in the way, or it's my depression again, and I would label it as that. I used to think that I would always be this way, that I would never accomplish anything of value, and that I was crazy. I thought I'd end up in a mental institution, seriously. You know, uh, my uncle was schizophrenic, he passed away, and he was highly medicated, and he was crazy, literally. And he was in a mental institution, and I thought I was gonna be like him. That's what I thought my whole life. And I thought, you know, this is just the way I, it, it, it's gonna be. But God delivered me. And I began replacing those lies with the truth of what, gospel, what the gospel says about my identity as a child of God. I was chosen by the God of the universe before the world even was, began, had began. I was his ambassador, his disciple. I was loved with an everlasting love, not human love, not like love of your friends, even love of your parents, because that would fail. But it was eternal. It didn't end. It was constant. It was unconditional. There was nothing I had to do to deserve it. He just loved me. Um, I knew that he had cared about my every need, that um, he protected me, and that he knew my name, and he knew that every tear I cried, he, he, he knew all about that. And he was with me this whole way. He's intimately acquainted with my knees, my knees, well, sure, my knees. <laughs> he was intimately acquainted with my knees, okay? Scripture was so healing to me, and I remember the power of Psalm 91 and about its protection over me. It was my belief in the sufficiency of Scripture that changed me. Well, this was, an instant, this was not an instant change. It was a process, okay? I had years of unhealthy patterns of thinking that needed to be retrained. I had to take every thought captive and ask myself, is this true? Is this right? Is this what God would want me to speak on or to, to think on? And my trust in God, I literally had to rely on him every second of the day. My fear had been so severe that there were times I couldn't even leave my house. I couldn't eat. I was eating like rice and water. I literally was eating. Um, I couldn't drive. There was a period of time I couldn't drive. I uh, literally was not functioning. Um, so um, I had to take baby steps. Um, but each step of faith I took, God was faithful and providing more and more courage to take the next step. I also started understanding how self-focused I was. I was counseled to look outward because, you know, we're, when we become self-focused, it feeds the fears. It feeds our weaknesses. It makes us, it just like, it's like this big snowball, and it just gets worse and worse the more we focus on ourselves. So I was counseled to look outward, to serve others, to pray for others, to just ask how someone else is doing. How are you today? So if they ask how you, you're doing today, I'm great. If you could pray for me, that'd be great. But not focus so much on ourselves. And I think it's 
really easy to do that, especially when we're in pain, and I did. And I, and I totally failed at that. But once I started realizing that I had to get my focus outward, even though it was like the most hard, it was the hardest thing I could ever do, it was actually the most beneficial in my healing and the fear and the, and the depression would subside. So I began writing music as a way to cry out to God, and this is where I began to find freedom. The power of scripture and worship joined as one set me free. I began to truly worship this God that I've been learning about my whole life, growing up at church. I studied his attributes, his power, his holiness, his deity, his, his sovereignty, and then I started documenting my story interwoven with verses, and the Holy Spirit would give me lyrics and melodies. So honestly, guys, me standing here in front of you, it's like a miracle. It's by God. You know, me telling you this. You know, I wanted to die many times. I thought about it. I didn't attempt it, but I thought about it. I was actually more afraid of trying than doing it. And the Lord sustained me, and he was gracious uh, because he had a plan, okay? Um, you know, if I look back on my life, I see each struggle, each thought, each fear that I fought through paving the way and revealing God's faithfulness and bringing me to where I am here today. Um, I thought I'd live in fear and despair until I died. But that was not God's plan for me. It's not God's plan for any of us to die before his time. And he has a plan for each one of you today. And um, though you may think this is ridiculous. I don't think, I don't, I'm miserable right now. I don't have friends. I feel depressed. My parents are hurt on me. I don't know what you guys are struggling. I have a 16, 16 year old and a 14 year old, so I get it. I get a lot of what you're struggling. Maybe different than what my girls are struggling with, but, but I know that there's a lot that you guys are battling every day. And, and you think no one, no one gets it. No one understands me, but you know what? You guys, everyone in here, you're all in this together. You look, you look to your left, you look to your right. Each person in here is struggling with something. It may not be with these things I'm listing or things I've gone through, but you're all fighting something. And the only way to pull out of that is to seek the Lord. And how you do that, you cry out to him. That's the first thing you do. And that was, um, that's what he did for me. Um, that's what I started doing. Um, because he hears his, he hears the cries, and when we um, also uh, fear the Lord is the other thing. Fear the Lord, not fearing man. Meaning, uh, what do I, what do I mean by that? It means, you know, if someone asks you, here's the situation. Okay, your parents told you maybe, okay, you can't have Snapchat. Okay, but all your friends have Snapchat. Okay, and you know maybe, maybe your friends are like, why can't you? Have well, my parents told me I couldn't. And then they start pressuring me, well, why, why can't you? Your parents aren't gonna find out. What do you guys do in that situation? What would, be, what would be the best way to handle that? I would say, I would say, cry out to the Lord. God, what do I do? God, what do I do in this situation? And I guarantee he will tell you, obey your parents and fear God, not fear man. And when I say fear God, it's not I'm terrified of God, okay? It means we obey him. And He's if he's chosen you, like if you guys are believers, if you believe in Jesus, if he's chosen you, then he will give you that strength to be different. And I'm calling all of you guys to be different today and not be conformed to those around you unless it's for the glory of God, right? So um, I'm just encouraging, guy, encouraging you guys to seek the Lord um, and really cry out to him. Um, I, I wanted to, I don't know how much time, do I have 10, 15 minutes? Okay. All right, I want to just say a couple more things and then I'm gonna just sing a couple of my songs, okay? Um, and then afterwards, if anyone has questions, I don't know if I've time for that, how that works, I can totally talk to you guys, okay? But I just wanted to say one other thing. We were created to worship God, okay? So I think the reasons why I had so much fear and depression in my life is because I had no idea what my identity was. I had no idea. I was walking around thinking, what am I doing in this life? I don't know. It's
And so I had all this pent up like anxiety and I was depressed. And then I started realizing that like I had a gift and that was to sing and okay, so I started using that. And then I realized my, my purpose on this earth is actually to worship God and to glorify him with my life. And I wasn't doing that, okay? So once I started doing the things that God had called me to do, those feelings of depression, suicidal thoughts, anxiety, it's like an anxiety, but not overwhelming, where it's, dep you know, like, so, where I'm so overwhelmed by it. But guys, I just encourage you to worship the Lord, and if you don't, if you decide not to, because you may walk out of here and be like, whatever she said, I don't care, okay? So if you do not do that, you guys, um, life will be really hard for you. And, um, guarantee it. If you choose to worship yourself or other people rather than God, life's going to really be hard. And um, your fulfillment in this life is not going to be by other people. It's going to be with the Lord. So I just encourage you to cry out to the Lord, seek the Lord, and um, just come together and, and encourage one another. Don't judge one another, okay? Just be loving, you know, encourage one another. Um, and stay in his presence. I have like a whole list. I don't, I don't have time to read all this, but I'm going to read a few. I have a whole list of who, I'm just going to show you. It's this whole list of who we are in Christ. It's our identity in Christ. Okay, I wish I could hand out one of these to all of you guys. I pinned, I pinned it up on my daughter's uh, uh, mirror the other day, so she knows what her identity in Christ is. It's very important, and it's very important to speak these things out loud, out loud to yourself. So it's, um, this, is, this is who you are in Christ, if you are in Christ. I am faithful. I am God's child. I've been justified. I am Christ's friend. I belong to God. I am assured that all things work together for good. I am confident that God will perfect the work he has begun in me. I'm hidden with Christ. I'm blessed in the heavenly realms with spiritual blessings. I'm holy and blameless. I'm adopted as his child. I'm chosen. I am given God's glorious grace, lavishly and without restriction. I am forgiven. I have a purpose. I have hope. I am included. Right? These are all amazing things. Okay? So I'm just going to encourage you guys today in that. And um, I'm going to share a couple of my songs here. Okay, so... called my liberty. I just wrote it like a week ago. So um, it's actually a song for it's like a testimonial, kind of just where the Lord brought me through. It's an encouragement to you. 